The 4AT tool is used for the identification of delirium. It's been chosen as our screening tool for delirium um, and it's been used nationally because it's quick and easy to use but highly effective in recognising delirium. It compromises of four sections. The first section is based around alertness. This is looking at is somebody more drowsy or sleepy than normal or are they hyper agitated or anxious. And if you're scoring on this, you're clearly abnormal and that would give you a score of four. The next section is your AMT4, which has been used for a long time. And these are four cognitive based questions. This is looking at your age, your date of birth, where you are and what year it is. And if you're scoring one of these questions incorrectly, you'll get a score of one. If you're scoring two or more of these questions incorrectly, you're going to get a score of two. The next question is based around assessing attention because inattention is a key thing within delirium that we need to look for. Um, the question that's been designed for this is asking the patient to recite the months of the year backwards, that's from December going back. You can score 0, 1 or 2 for this. If you can get 7 months of the year or more in a row backwards successfully, you'll score 0 for that. If you get um, one or two wrong, then you're going to score one, or if the patient refuses to start for it, they'll score one. If, however, the patient is untestable for that, which is usually due to impaired cognitive level or conscious level, you're going to score two for that. The last question in relation to screen for 4AT and delirium is acute change or fluctuating course. This is one of the most difficult parts to assess. The acute change is has there been an acute change in someone's alertness or cognition or mental function which can include things like hallucination or paranoia that's been arising within the last two weeks but still evident within the last 24 hours? The part that's difficult for assessing this is if someone's got a baseline cognitive impairment such as dementia and often to really find out if this is an acute change or not we need to be getting some collateral information from family or friends or caregivers. Um, the other part of this question is fluctuating in course. If someone's cognition is very fluctuant and at one minute they're relatively coherent and then there's an acute change in that, that fluctuation is really characteristic of delirium and we should be answering yes to that question. For either of those parts, if we're answering yes to that question, you're going to get a score of four and that gets added to the rest of that to give you your total. If the total is four or above, that's highly indicative of a probable delirium, we should then be looking at alerting the medical teams, completing a time bundle and ensuring that they've got everything in place and also making sure to involve family from there on out. If the score is less than four, then the chances are this is probably not a delirium and you'll then be passed back over to completion of the squid tool in the following days. It is probably important to note if you're getting a score of between one and three and it's particularly involved around the, four, the AMT4 question that could be an underlying cognitive impairment and it might be worth discussing with family if they have any concerns about memory or cognition and that could merit a referral to the memory teams for assessment of possible dementia or underlying cognitive impairment.